call the meeting to order. So the recording is in progress and uh, we'll have Stephanie call the roll. Okay, uh, Marta Larson. Uh, present, uh, calling in from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. Present, calling from Milan, Michigan. Bonnie Weber. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township, Ypsilanti. Elizabeth Thompson. Present, calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Uh, Ellen Offen. Don't see her yet. Steve Stein. He's in the waiting room. Can you let him in? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't. We don't have a waiting room. Well, he's on the attendee list. Oh, he was on the attendee list. Here he is. Yeah, Here I don't is. see him. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I'll give it. I'll come back to him. Uh, Bennett Stark. I'm present calling in from Ann Arbor. And Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield. Okay. And Steve Stein. Um, here, I do want to mention that the magazines in the waiting room are really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, um, just like Bob said, I also, I got it here, but I didn't get any magazines. I mean, any magazines, any uh, emails from you, Stephanie. Um, this time and then last time. So I'm just yeah. wondering where it says I, um, what's it called, I Commission on Aging. You might want to just check to make sure that it has everybody on the list. But I do I get it from Peter. I didn't get it either, it Stephanie. Did. Yeah, no one got mine this week. It wasn't sending to anybody. So I had Peter forward the email oh. for me. So the Peter, the email I got from Peter. I did, but okay. I didn't it, but it, the the wash uh, uh, doesn't like but doesn't like me sending emails. So I had Peter sent it, um, but thank you for letting me know. Okay. And then Ellen often, you're the last one. Yeah. And where are you calling in from? Oh, I'm sorry. No, Ann, Arbor. Okay. Ann Arbor. Okay. Perfect. Do you have a quorum? Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, um, it's time for public participation. Uh, do we have any members of the public that wish to address the commission? If so, raise your hand and you'll be calling one by one. I see Mavon Cudley, Cudney has her hand up. Hi, um, I'm Yvonne Cudney. I work with the Housing Bureau for Seniors. Uh, I took a look at the report that the draft report that's going to be submitted and I love it. And I thank you so much for paying attention to um, the need for affordable housing or housing for seniors and generally in general. I just wanna talk briefly a little bit about um, the housing situation for older adults in Washtenaw County. Just a few facts. Washtenaw County has about 371,000 residents. 20% of them are 60 and over. Older adults, which for the statistic I'm citing right now is 65 plus, account for about 30,000 housing units locally. So that's housing units. Of those 30,000 households, over 9,000 or about 31% are housing cost burdened, meaning they spend over 30% of their income on mortgages or homeowners insurance or rent. In low and very low opportunity index areas of Washtenaw County, the eviction rate varies from 11 to 50% and an estimated 18% of those are older adults, 60 and over. With regard to foreclosure, I've been tracking them since the moratorium was lifted in October. 42% of the households experiencing mortgage foreclosure are 55 and over. Uh, and 39% of them live in very low opportunity index areas. There are different kinds of affordable housing that are being contemplated for seniors and some that already exist. Some of them are HUD project-based or housing choice vouchers, which is where HUD or the, the via the housing commission um, subsidizes the rent. And it means that the tenant pays 30% of their income towards rent we have about 1,300 of those units in Washtenaw County. 
that are project-based. I can't speak to how many are housing choice vouchers, which are portable. I don't know how many of those are seniors, but that means um, we have 1,300 and a lot of seniors who need them. Uh, as the county contemplates affordable housing, what they're looking at often is um, people who earn 60 to 80% of the area median income. That's anywhere this year from 44,800 to 55,950. 28% of the senior population uh, qualifies under the Alice, Alice threshold, which means they make less than $30,000 a year between their social security, other income that they might be earning, any other benefits or retirement that they get. They don't even qualify for that affordable housing. And I'm also gonna just put in a little bit of a plug here that 69% of the clients that the Housing Bureau sees are income constrained under that guideline. It means that there's a lot of low income, uh, older adults who need assistance with housing. And we provide that, how, we provide that assistance by securing housing, um, helping with property taxes and things like that, case management, a lot of case management. So I just wanna put in a bit of a plug here. We need more affordable, truly affordable housing as in the subsidy type where 30% of the income is paid and we need some other alternate ways of housing older adults, which could be like home share or something like that. Um, and a lot of older adults really just need some case management and assistance with, with, how, with their housing needs, whether it be aging in place or figuring out how to pay rent, utilities and prescriptions. All of that goes into their, um, their housing calculations, right? So I just wanted to put in a little bit of a plug there. Again, I thank you for paying attention to that. And I um, really appreciate the report and I'm hopeful about getting some funding for older adults through the ARPA funding. Thanks. I wonder, uh, Yvonne, if you would send us your remarks in writing so we can um, remember them since many of us probably didn't have time to take notes and everything you said. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody oh, do I send them? Who do I send them to and how? Stephanie? Yep, I'll put my email. Okay, I'll great. Thanks. Yep. Um, anyone on the commission have anything in response before we move on to the next public member? Bennett? Okay, this is a question. Um, Marianne represents who or whom? Her name is Mary Vaughn, um, and would you tell us again the organization you're with, Mary Vaughn? Uh, I work with the Housing Bureau for Seniors. Okay, thank you. Um, Stephen? Yeah, I just uh, really wanted to just say thank you. Um, that, that was really um, sort of informative. It, uh, it gave us, um, or raised our consciousness to the issues, and you know, I know I learned a lot from what you described. So um, thanks, I hope you'll stay involved because I think it's a really, really important issue that um, you know we can't think about enough. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other, seeing no other hands, um, is there any other member of the public that wishes to uh, speak? Seeing none, uh, looks like we're gonna move on to the next agenda item. Um, the next agenda item is report from the Board of Commissioners and um, Jason notified me that he would not be with us today. So uh, he has a conflict, so we will skip that part. Uh, the next item is approval of the minutes. And at this time we'll have a motion. Take that motion. Motion by um, Ellen, uh, support by Marie. Stephanie. Um, Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Sorry, was that? I didn't hear you. Oh. Am I cutting out? Yeah, yes. there you go. Now I hear you. <laughs> okay, good. I saw your lips moving. I figured it was a yes. Okay. <laughs> Bonnie Weber? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Ellen Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? Yes. 
Bennett Stark. Yes. And Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is subcommittee updates. And first we're gonna hear from the communications subcommittee. Uh, so that would be me. Um, so we drew, received some updated slide decks from the HAC. So we requested that Peter update those on uh, our website, and then we'll be linking those to the needs report uh, once those are up. Would you please um, see what HAC stands for? Oh, sure. The Healthy Aging Collaborative, the Washtenaw Healthy Aging Collaborative. Um, we have been doing additional work on the need summary report, working on the slide deck with the, the chair for the Board of Commissioners presentation. Uh, and then the, the ARPA subcommittee requested that we draft a couple of emails, one for the Commission on Aging members to send to their commissioner about the, the work that we've been doing and the documents we've been working on so we can start conversations, start getting them to look at these things. Uh, and then a second email was for the Commission on Aging members to send out to your community contacts, um, others in your district, encouraging them to look at the documents as well and provide their support via email, via written public comment, or attending the Board of Commissioner working sessions. Uh, so we'll be sending those drafts out to you all soon. And Marie, would you reconfirm who is on your subcommittee? Yeah, that is Bonnie, myself, and Marta. Okay. Um, thank you. Next is needs assessment. Bonnie has her hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Bonnie. I didn't see your hand. Sorry. It's okay. That's all right, huh? Um, I, I wanted to ask everyone, what we're trying to do is if we are fortunate enough to get ARPA funding in the, when we present the proposal, the, if we, when, once we present the proposal, we felt that it would be really important if we could send out an email to our local, first of all, our local board of commissioner, in which Marie has done a nice letter to do that. And also, if you have any specific groups in your community, in your area, in your district, to send them out a copy and ask for their support. Um, Stephanie was kind enough to put together uh, a spreadsheet with all of our Board of Commissioners names, districts, and email addresses and phone numbers. So we could customize those letters for you to drop, like if you're going, if you're working, let's say in district four, you, we could do an email for you that says district four, here's your commissioner's name and email address. So those folks don't have to go look it up to make, just try to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to communicate to the board of commissioners. So I wanted to know if you were interested in doing that, before we put all the work into you know doing it because it will take some time to customize everything but you know i'm willing to help and and do that because i think it is important if you know organizations that may not be coming to our meetings but could possibly benefit from um you know arpa funding um so that's kind of just a question out there do you guys think that that would be something you know worthwhile that we should be doing I see that uh, Ellen and then Elizabeth have their hands up. So Ellen, you're, you're muted, Ellen. I think it's a very good idea, sorry. I think it's a very good idea and I would be more than willing to do it. Um, and um, I think it, it, um, I, I my question would be is I can target people in my district for sure, because I have a whole neighborhood full of them and I can do that. <laughs> um, although my internet and everything is down, it's been down for a day or two, but um, I'm happy to do that. But I'd also like to target it to other people in the community who have time and interest and I don't know that um, I could use their districts. So should I send you a list 
and say, here's the people or the addresses, or can I just say, can I get them um, in this area or this area or that area? Because I can look at the county commissioners and pretty much figure out where they are and my friends are. Yeah, so how about we provide a, a document that has district one example, district two example, yes. and then you can just grab whichever ones you need for your contacts. And I will, I will send them things that they can send uh, to some of them. Some of them would want to do their own, but I can do that. So that's one thing. And the other thing I wondered is, um, I think that um, I would be happy to talk to some other people, communicate with some other people who might talk to county commissioners on a different level. Would that be okay? Does it have to just be my neighbors and my friends? And Okay. That's so fine. Great. Go for it. Yeah. Well, you know, I have nothing to do, so this is great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hook you up, Ellen. We'll give you plenty to do. Yeah, careful what you say, Ellen. I'm good at being careful about not doing much. That's <laughs> why I do nothing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, you're next. And then I, have I think this is a great idea. Um, I think even if some of us overlap and we have a end up one person in the community gets contact from several of us, that's a good thing because I think it shows um, how important this is. Um, I think it's especially important because um, I talked to my county commissioner, um, Justin Hodge, just at some length to let him know that, that a proposal was coming forth from us as well as our needs assessment. And he let me know that he's already been approached by folks who are advocating that the ARPA money be used to give a rebate to everyone who has had a higher Medicare premium, as Medicare premiums went up recently. Um, I know that's an idea floating around the country as sort of, if I may, a quick and dirty way to get ARPA money out to older people. It ends up, of course, not being targeted. And I think our proposal um, is much better suited to the needs of our county. But it shows me that there's a lot of talk about how to spend some of this towards seniors and we want to get our proposal in the discussion. I also, I know we have uh, one commissioner in Ypsilanti who for health reasons on our commission has not been able to participate. And because I live in Ypsilanti too, I'd be happy to do some outreach in that area as well. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, I have a, a, a lineup of Stephen, Margaret, and then Bennett. So Stephen, you're up. Yeah, um, so first of all, great job to the um, communications committee. I think, you know, we can see by the attendance there's still a lot of opportunity to have, um, you know, more involvement. So it was great. I, one question I had was, oh, two questions. One is in regards to the CEO and EATS summary. If, if it gets approved today, what do you think about including that in what we send to people so that they have, and maybe you said this, I might've missed it, um, but would it make sense to include that in any email we send or document we mail so that they have it? It might um, engage them to wanna be part of it because they see how productive, you know, the commission has been. So that was one, one comment. And then did, did we say that there's gonna be some kind of a spreadsheet that will actually document who we've, connected with, I, I, I realize there's going to be overlap because, you know, I might email somebody and then someone else will email somebody very close in time. But I think by compiling all this stuff, we'll also see any gaps in which one of us might have thought, oh, we never contacted Catholic Social Services, you know, something like that. So is there a way of uh, compiling a spreadsheet um, if we, if that wasn't mentioned earlier? I apologize if it was. Are sending out the needs summary once it, the document is a, is approved, we can 
individually send it out to whomever we want. It should definitely be sent to the emails we do to our commissioner representative. Um, and then you can be selective based on the people and organizations you're reaching out to organizations are probably going to be very interested in this maybe you have uh, colleagues who are interested in reading something like this i know i have colleagues where if i attached all of this into one email they would feel overwhelmed by that so use your discretion but it is once it's approved uh, as a final document then you would be welcome to send those out um we would have to be careful with any uh, list that we do that we do put together. We need to be careful that it's if we're not like taking adding people's names to an email list right without their permission because we don't want to get into any spam things. But if you if you want to keep track of who you are reaching out to, uh, I think that's a great idea for your own your own use further down the road. But. Yeah, although um, if I can comment on that, just in, keep, I agree with what you said about an email list so that we don't just regularly use it, but I still think compiling it all allows us to sort of identify people that we haven't sent it to when we feel like everyone has done their thing. So I think as long as, you know, and that, that's why I think we send it all to Stephanie or to Peter or, or to you. So, so that at least there's a list we could look at it and then you know understand who who wasn't reached and who was that we you know sometimes I'll see a list and that will remind me um, and then one other thing as long as I got the floor um, in regards to the um, presentation um, by Marta to the commission yeah you know is will we be reviewing the presentation before it's used so that whatever you know is communicated to the commission that we will you know as a commission on aging sanction her remarks uh, all the remarks are coming directly from one of these other documents our um, annual report the final needs summary and the arpa proposal nothing will have new information on there right. marta did you will there have be a powerpoint any it will be a short slide deck. She only has 15 minutes to share all of this information. Um, so it'll be a, a very short slide deck. Right, so can we review that slide deck before it goes, before it's official to be used in front of the commission? Like that's something that the commission would wanna understand and, and firm up that we, that we support it. Marta, what are your thoughts? Since it is oh. only 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm thinking that um, I don't know if there's going to be time um, after our next meeting, um, it, between our next ah. meeting and the um, presentation to the Board of Commissioners for any lengthy review. Um, I know that sometimes it, you know, when you send something out for people to review, then you end up with, you know, two different people making different suggestions and it gets kind of scrambled. I don't know how far in advance I have to submit the slide deck to the county. So, you know, within the realm of possibility, I would be happy to try to let people take a look at it, but I can't guarantee that there will be time. Well, what I'm suggesting, Marta, is you can decide what, how about it, what our recommendations are and what you use and don't use, but it would allow us, I think, as a group to sort of firm up that if there's something really, really major, will contact with you. If it's something subtle, it's not gonna be like the needs report where we go over and over it. And I think you could do it by email and say, hey, if you wanna give suggestions, it has to be by this you know, hour of this day, you know, and it could be the next day. But um, I think that that's something as a Commission on Aging member, I would wanna see before that information is presented. I think uh, that's a fair request. However, you need to understand that the slide deck is going to be simply um, very brief images, and most of the most of the information that's conveyed is going to be coming out of my mouth at the time of the presentation. And I am not going to be writing prepared remarks. I'm going to um, ha have talking points, maybe that will come right out of the documents that we're submitting, but. Um, I do not read presentations. I find that extremely boring and insulting. Yeah, 
Yeah. So again, if you could share the slides with a timeline for recommendations. We're still working no. on the slide deck, so I'm not sure when it's going to be ready, but I'll do my best to get it out in advance for people to have a quick look at. Thank you very much. Um, I have in my, my list here, I have Margaret, Bennett, Bonnie, and then Elizabeth. Uh, and then I see Ellen is also has her hand up. So we'll call on Margaret next. Well, I can be quick, but I, I think um, in our identification of people to uh, that we want to send the report, send information to, uh, we need to think of various county influentials. And I'm thinking of council members, um, of various cities and um, other people who maybe past commissioners who are have connections with the current commissioners. So I think we need to think um, influencers uh, mm -hmm. as we identify who to send it to. Yeah, I already thought of my township board members, but thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I have Bennett next. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's already been acknowledged that seniors are not very effect effective in terms of advocating for themselves. So as a consumer and having lived in Lurie Terrace for seven years, I really don't have the contacts outside of Lurie Terrace that most of you have who've spent a good part of your professional life. So right now, all I can think of is a handful of seniors in Lurie Terrace that would be, um, that I think would be likely to respond. There are a group or two of, um, or I should say there are some groups that uh, I might um, write to, but do you have any suggestions? because I'm sort of at a loss uh, in terms of um, identifying uh, influencers as to use the words of the last speaker. So do you have any suggestions for me? Yeah, I would suggest that you um, look up any other aging services that are in your district um, and identify a hopefully a staff person directly, but even just a general email or phone number to, to reach and to get the right email uh, for the right people, I think that would be a great place to start. Okay, I mean, there have been, um, you know, a, a director or two of um, <clears throat> centers that I've spoken to and who are interested in, in what we're doing. Okay, thank you. Ben, and I would suggest your city council members as well. Okay, very good. And Bonnie, you're next. I just wanted to make a, just a real brief comment about the importance of, to me, it's, you know, city influencers, local people, anybody that sends an email to the board of commissioners supporting our ARPA proposals so that we can get funding out to, to, the, to the community. When we met with Jason, he said he's anticipating about um, $200 million request for $40 million pot. So it is important that we do get, get the word out that we are putting in a proposal, whether it's um, private citizens or influencers or city council or you know whatever range, just you know that we get that communication flowing. That look at our our proposal, see the value of it, and, and award us some money. Mm -hmm. The other one, Stephen, on the on the slide deck, as you know, don't going into presentation slide decks are pretty fluid, you know. And with the limited time that Marta has, the officers and the communication team, which are basically one and the same, we're going to be just pulling data from the various highlights, probably that summary, the executive summary portions, you know, very similar to something like that, easy to read. But we've got three different proposals that we have to try to just pull highlights out, bullets out, and that's what it's going to be. Um, if for some chance we get something on that slide deck that you think was really important that we should bring before the board, we can go back again. That's one thing that Jason says all the time. 
is come back again, come back again, come back again, come back again. This isn't a one shot done. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at we're going to be presenting before the board throughout the year. Um, so this is to me is like Jason said, is the starting point. We're getting before them, we're getting the meat and potatoes to them, and then we can come back again and again. So don't worry if we miss something that you think is super important because we can go back again. Okay. And I just, I just wanted to reinforce that. That's just not a one-time deal. Right. Okay. I have Elizabeth, then Ellen, and then Stephen in the queue. So Elizabeth, um, you're since we're talking about the, the presentations, both to the work group, working group and to the uh, board of commissioners as a whole, I just like to uh, reinforce what Peter, at our last meeting, Peter responded to my question, you know, that um, it is powerful to have uh, other commission members attending, although obviously with 15 minutes, Marta is not going to be calling on us to say anything, but just the fact we're there listening. So that might be helpful. That's also a way to make sure that you know exactly what message got given to them so that you can reinforce it. Good point. Um, then about keeping a list of who we contact. It doesn't have to be, I think, emails, but I think Steve's point about just noting who you contact, you, I myself, I know will look later and go, oh, <laughs> I got so-and-so. And to that point, Bennett, I would not dismiss the power of contacting the people you know in Lurie Terrace because they're consumers of a service right now. They live in Lurie Terrace and that's housing where seniors live. And to be blunt, every vote person who's a voter is a powerful person to contact the board of commissioners. And it's, I think sometimes it's more powerful if you have some of those people because they're not coming from a, gee, I want my organization to get money. They're coming from a, I need this service position. Mm -hmm. So I think then it actually, you have a very powerful group of people to reach out to. And then I just have a protocol, maybe question for Peter. Uh, we talked about sending, <clears throat> when we send emails to folks about ARPA, um, and sending the, the needs assessment piece too, if it seems appropriate. Um, do, would commissioners be upset if this material goes out to folks before the formal presentation to the county commission? Will they feel like um, <clears throat> they should get it first? Peter had to step away. I just texted him that you had a question. Sorry, I meant to, he texted oh. me. Oh, I might be back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, so I think I heard the end of that question. Um, was it well, about- Let me repeat it, Peter, just okay. well, we've talked about sending copies of the needs assessment um, when we, for people who might be interested when we're letting them know about the ARPA proposal. And I was just wondering, would commissioners <coughs> that if the material went out before it was formally presented to them or would they be okay with that? So I, I believe uh, y'all have now made that public uh, by including it in your meeting materials. I would okay. certainly say uh, if you're sending it to a group of people, send it to them first or we can get it to them first so uh i just know sometimes especially when it's the commission on aging which is an a advisory board of the board of commissioners mm -hmm. when they have people starting to call them or contact them i know they typically prefer to have the, the materials that people are referring to because it's like your commission on aging did this they just want to make sure they have that already um so we can make sure that as soon as it's like finalized and ready to go before you send it out to folks they all have it and know they have it so that when people call, start calling, they're not like caught off guard by being like, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen this and this is supposed to be a board of us. So I think just making that one step is totally fine. You don't need to wait for the presentation. 
um, by any means, but I think uh, getting that to them as soon as it's finalized so that they have it and if they can search their emails when somebody calls and find it so they can see what people are referring to, I think that is what would be uh, uh, preferred and appreciated by them. And I think we should note that today we're, we're planning to um, finalize the needs assessment report. However, the ARPA proposal is only in first draft today, so it's not ready to be sent out until after our next meetings. We should be clear about that. Okay, I have Ellen in queue and then Stephen. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Um, First of all, um, to Bennett, your county commissioner will go ahead if you talk to her and she will contact a lot of people. She is really good at that and she appointed you. So I'm guessing she would like to hear from you. Um, so I would strongly suggest you do that. That's just an easier way. And she is very active in the community. So I think you have a really good person who can contact a lot of people. Um, the other thing, the second thing I wanted to say is I, when I would send something out, I might adjust it to kind of Ellen talk um, to get to my friends. I might target some of those. I don't know that I would put the needs with it um, only because I think um, people who are not retired like I am don't always have the time to read every single thing. And I'd like them to make a contact or do something. And I think unless they ask or say no, I don't see a need to do that in my case. I, I would like to send them. I'd like to say something that makes it sound like it just came from me. Um, you know, probably it's something about the Dodgers or something, but in any case, um, I'd like to do that. I also think that um, when you send it to people and you want those people to act, because you can't, you, if you send out a lot of them, you can't be sure, you might want to add the, not only um, uh, the contact of the county commissioner, and, but when the meeting is and the fact that you're making a presentation. You don't have to, it just depends. But I do think that knowing it, you personally, they would like the commitment and what is going on so they can see you're invested. That's just some ideas. Um, the other thing that I think would be very good, and I don't want to give my list to anybody. I, my county commissioner, you know who they are, but my neighbors who have nothing to do, they can do this. <laughs> um, I don't want to start giving out a list of them. I don't want to put other people that I know their names on because then I'd have to call and say, I'm putting you on a list, or I'd have to say, I'm putting you on a list, which makes them in my mind, far less likely to move forward and do something. I, nobody wants to be on a list. I can keep the list if I ever need it to go back to, I promise you, I will do that. Um, because I have that list, <laughs> I will just do it. But I think it's wrong to, to, to say to me, give me the names and to tell you that I'm gonna give you uh, Jane Doe or Jim Jones, who uh, Jim Jones, but someone, I, I just don't wanna do that. And I really, uh, and I don't wanna add too much to it because very busy people, particularly if you're gonna send it to agencies and I, um, they're very busy and they know a lot of this, but I, I really do think that it is not a good idea to, to have to do that unless you know the person wants those details. So thank you for letting me rant a little bit. Fair enough. Okay, Stephen, and then I have Bennett. Uh, do you need, mean to have your hand up, Bennett, or? Um, yeah, my hand is up, right? Okay, after Stephen then. Yeah, so uh, first I wanted to say I heard the other, um, Commission on Aging members. Um, so just a few responses. One is Ellen, I agree with everything that you said um, in regards to the list piece. I, I wasn't in any way suggesting individual names. I really was just um, highly recommending organization. So, you know, if it's an individual person, you know, that has no involvement with a specific aging service provider or, you know, organization that you think could be important, 
you know, then of course it would, you know, I, I would recommend you don't list them. But if you, you know, you spoke to somebody at a certain organization, it would be great to just name that organization. So I, I hope you'd feel differently about that. And if you didn't want to put email or contact information, in, I think, you know, I absolutely would, you know, respect that as well. Um, the other thing in regards to adding the, the Commission on Aging Needs um, <clears throat> Summary, I, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that I do believe the people that, that you think are important would benefit from it, but the idea that it comes in a later email, you know, to me, you know, might, might make more sense because of the concern that it dilutes the thing that you, you feel is most important. So I wanted to support that. And then the last thing is just Bonnie's comments. Um, I, I absolutely heard Bonnie, you know, what you said. I still strongly feel like we should have the ability to see the slide deck before the meeting. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that can be done. Okay, I have Bennett and Q and then Eric. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciated your, uh, I guess, comments, uh, Ellen, and, uh, and especially the reference to our county commissioner, whom I don't know, um, but will find out. Um, the, um, oh, and um, I believe it was Elizabeth who said that, uh, you know, getting uh, comments from consumers uh, can be quite, um, well, powerful or eventful. And so I guess that uh, my challenge will be to energize some of them who basically may never have um, relayed any of their, um, I guess, uh, difficulties uh, with a county or a city uh, <clears throat> representative. So I accept that. Um, I do think it's rather tricky. Oh, and the question is that if I am, and I assume I will be contacting, um, well, <clears throat> am I speaking as a commissioner or as a consumer or both? When I do speak to Lurie Terrace folks, when I do make some connections with some organizations, that I'm a part of. And Marta, you would be the person to respond to that. <clears throat> I think that it's perfectly acceptable for you to send out the report as a private citizen saying that the Co Commission on Aging has adopted this report and you thought it would be interested, that they would be interested and want to know about this information. <clears throat> okay, so that is the way you would go. Is that correct, Marta? That's the way I intend to go. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, um, okay. And we'll have I, scripts, email scripts for you to copy and paste and amend uh, for those of you who want to use that or need direction. Okay, thank you. And okay, I don't see any other hands. Um, so, okay, we're going to move ahead to the needs assessment uh, subcommittee report. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'll make that report. Uh, we did not have a meeting between last session and this session, uh, but um, we're working on the needs summary, making those edits and updates. Uh, you see most of them on the copy that you received earlier this week. There have been a, a few other grammar things that have come in, it, come in uh, that we have adjusted. And um, I'm wondering if anyone has any comments on the needs summary before we move to motions. Um, I see Bennett. Well, uh, I thought it was very good. And I think it achieved uh, what was intended. So. We've had, uh, we reviewed this at our last meeting quite extensively, and we've had a period of time in which commissioners were able to give information to the, um, the subcommittee on needs assessment. So at this time, um, I think it's appropriate to have a motion to approve this report. I second the motion. This is Steve. 
I wasn't making a motion. I said, it's, accept a motion. So are you making the motion, Stephen? I am making the motion to support an outstanding um, Commission on Aging Needs report. Okay, so do we have a second to that, Elizabeth? I'll second. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need a roll call vote. Stephanie, do you think we do? Yeah, we do. Okay. Peter had said last time that any okay. that we have to do roll call vote for everything. Yeah. Is there any discussion before we uh, move to the uh, vote? Okay, Stephanie. Okay, Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes, yes. Got it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie Weber. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Ellen Offen. Yes. Steve Stein. Yes. Bennett Stark. Yes. And Margaret Reynolds. Oh, I think you're muted. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> the thumb has voted. That works. The motion passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Marie, would you reconfirm who's on your subcommittee, please? I can. So that is myself, Margie, Bonnie, and Christopher Lemon. OK, thank you. Um, OK, now we're going to talk about the ARPA. Uh, oh, wait, I see two hands. I see Elizabeth, and then I see Peter. I'd like to um, have it reflected in the minutes. Um, our gratitude for the tremendous work that the subcommittee did. And I also know Marie was able to involve some interns that she works with on helping out, which I think A, was a great learning experience for them and B, we benefited so much from what they did. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Peter? My comments were just going to be really similar. Just wanted to say congratulations on this. This is really exciting. Um, I know that uh, at times throughout the last year, like it feels like a lot is happening and a lot's not happening. Um, I've seen boards and commissions like take over a year to just get to the point where they have like a consistent meeting schedule and a consistent uh, uh, bylaws list. So uh, I know sometimes it seems frustrating, but uh, to, to get get set up, create the structures y'all needed host as many presentations as y'all have had, done extra research, write a report, approve a report after getting finalizing of like several different comments and feedback uh, is just really impressive. So I just wanted to uh, give kudos to you all and say great job. Thank you. I have to say the biggest challenge as chair so far has been keeping up with everybody else on the committee. That's for sure. <laughs> the job. Um, okay, so um, now we have the ARPA uh, proposal. And we'll turn to Bonnie for that. And Bonnie, are you planning to share your screen or how are you planning to go for it? No, I'm not a, sh a screen share. Okay. Um, Stephanie, do you have that? You want Stephanie to do that? Yeah, give me one. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. So before we start kind of going through the whole proposal, um, I put together the little summary letter to lead in because it is, it's, you know, the proposal is kind of, you know, lengthy to read, but the, the part that I wanted to make sure that the commission understands, that we understand, is the commitment that this proposal is asking of everyone. And that comes down to the meetings. The heart of the proposal is right now we're doing two monthly meetings for the Commission on Aging. If we get ARPA funding and it comes through, what this proposal is saying is that we are going to dedicate one of those monthly meetings to do the advisory body work, which is reviewing the ARPA proposals, scoring them to be sent back to the county. So that is quite a, and that will only of course happen during the process until the ARPA funds have been, all have been awarded. So that is a huge change in our, in our structure and our commitment as um, a commission. 
So that is that is the, the key point that I wanted to make sure that everybody fully understands that they have time to ask questions about. Um, if you know, reading through the reading through the process, reading through this proposal. Um, and that, you know, I want I wanted really to make sure that everyone understands that. I mean, the basic proposal, um, we're citing the needs assessment, the needs report that's going to be presented. It is so very in-depth. It gives such a good foundation on what the county needs to help, you know, the service providers for seniors in the county. Um, so that is a great foundation for this proposal. What we're doing is just kind of springboarding off of that, saying, here's all the data, here's all the information. We need $8 million. Um, that's what our ask is. Um, we're 20% of the population. $8 million represents 20% of what's left in the ARPA funding. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of is the, you know, the proposal piece, but the real heart of this is the process that we all understand that. So that being said, we'll just, we can just kind of go through um, what Stephanie's got up here on the screen. This first part here, um, are, we, are we on the first page, Stephanie? Yes, we are, okay. Because that first little lead in, the little letter to you guys, that is, this is not gonna go to anybody. That was just to you guys. So this part will not be part of the proposal. And this would start the proposal here. We've, we have um, the title that we've settled on and we've bounced it off a few other folks in the industry is the Older Adult Recovery Fund. We went with that. We want to make sure that we are not confused with the other priority fund um, that's already been approved, that we are a separate entity. We are not you know, coming back to the well from, you know, for asking for more money from the same organization. So that's why we have the Older Adult Recovery Fund. It kind of fits what the ARPA whole theory is. It's to help the county recover from COVID. So we start off with the, with the big facts, the 20%, the 13%, and the 86%. Um, one of the qualifiers for ARPA is you have to show that there is a need that you were impacted by COVID. And I think the 86% of COVID deaths for the seniors in Washington County definitely demonstrates that COVID had a devastating effect on seniors in our county. And then um, the pandemic exposed, um, that's just kind of a summary right from the needs assessment. And then we get the, um, that we are going to be looking at um, um, categories as well as programs, just a little summary there. So large organizations and then the programs that actually support the folks. The next little bullet is the ask for the $8 million in a brief on this on the summary. Again, this is just the executive summary. All the meat and potatoes comes from the, from the proposal that we'll go through. And then it states that the Commission on Aging is gonna be the advisory body, that would be us. And that the administrative structure is modeled after the priority community fund process. It's already exists, it's already, it's already being used now. And we would just build upon that and we're also asking for additional administrative support because there is a lot of back end. There's a lot of contacting organizations. There's reporting that has to go on. Um, there's you know getting the proposals from the county, scoring them, sending them back. So we've asked for additional administrative support, and we'll leave it to the county to figure out how to how to do that either with existing staff or hiring um, a temporary person through the ARPA process. And then just, a, then just a you know brief summary, asking for their support. So the next page actually starts the, the recovery fund. Again, we pulled it there. We've got our citations. Um, there's, a off, there's a tremendous amount of uh, proposals, citations, surveys, research and we've, we've tried to highlight those throughout here. Um, let's see here. Um, and it's, it's really just, it's really kind of just, this page is just really setting the stage 
kind of letting them know since the pandemic has hit, what the organizations have gone through, that the ARPA funds is explicitly to help older, adult, older adults who've been unevenly impacted by COVID-19, and then to, re, to support this recovery, you know, to fund the older adult recovery fund. You can scroll down to the next one there. <clears throat> and then here's the actual ask on the justification. We had a, link, a really good discussion with Jason on this. Um, he understands how we came up with the 8 million. Um, we also have included our citing the uh, aging needs summary report that Marta would have just have given them. And also notable is that our fund is going to support the entire county. So from rural areas to urban and everything in between, it's across the entire county. And we are hoping to get as many proposals as possible, all different size organizations. Um, we are, you know, we are really looking to help as many seniors uh, be supported in Washtenaw County as possible. And then the next section goes on to talk about the funds, what we're looking for. And here comes the, here comes the points from the needs and assessment. We pulled it right out of there. Medical needs, food and nutrition, housing, transportation, uh, technology and di digital inclusion. These are all the things that we need for health and wellness, social and community enrichment and overall improvement of the quality of life for older adults. Um, Jason was very nice in suggesting that we make this section a little bit broader than what we had. So you'll see it was changed a little bit from the original draft. Um, so we wanted to you know, highlight examples, of course, but to really put that sentence in, you know, that little paragraph in there that we're looking for areas of health and wellness, you know, social and community enrichment to make it a broader statement. And then the next section brings us down to the process. So we're modeling after what already in, is in existence. And then we get down to the key process difference. In the um, Priority Community Fund, they appointed 11 member um, body to do this. We already are an 11 member body. We already have been appointed by the um, County Board of Commissioners. So that is why we're saying that the Commission on Aging Members would serve as the advisory body. There is currently an application process now in place where they can go online, where they can submit their proposals. We are advocating to do the exact same thing, just tweak it out, of course, for our proposal versus the county um, uh, community proposal. There is already um, county staff in place that it does the vetting. What they do is, is all, all the proposals will come in. The county staff looks at every proposal and they do a high level review to see that if it's ARPA, um, it qualifies for ARPA. That's all they do. They don't assess it on any other qualifications. If it passes the ARPA, then they would send it down to the advisory body. So again, the advisory body is us. And then um, we had some discussion that a sub, the subcommittee, that would make sense if the proposals first come to the subcommittee, which would be five or fewer um, commissioners, there would be no um, outside agencies serving on this. It would be strictly the commissioners, since we are going to be voting and scoring each one of the proposals based on their own merit. And then the, um, the people that are serving on the subcommittee, let's say there's five, each we would review, we would score them, we would take the average, that would be the score of that particular proposal. And then all of the scored proposals then would be put in a package and would be sent to um, the advisory body. And then they would again visit it at the next meeting. So we'll scroll down, we'll get a little bit more detailed into that. All right, so the, the, what we're proposing is that the subcommittee meets at least once a month to review the proposals. Since we have no idea how many are coming, um, we have at least once a month that we're going to be looking at them. 
The scoring will be nine, nine to 10 will be strong, eight to seven is support, and six to zero is low. We take the average scores, we score them, and then it gets sent for a packet that's gonna to go to the entire advisory body. So then the next bullet point is we talked about dedicating one meeting a month for the sole purpose of reviewing these ARPA proposals. So collectively as a group, we will be serving as the advisory body. We have had a packet already sent to us with all of the proposals that have been scored by the subcommittee. And that at the monthly meeting that we have, we'll have time that we can discuss them if we want to. We can vote on them to accept the score by the subcommittee, or we can vote to rescore. If we felt that the subcommittee missed the mark, or you know, we, we have a stronger viewpoint, that's perfectly fine. Then the advisory body as a whole would score, and then the average of that score would become the new score that would be sent to the county administrator in the packet that we send up. So that's kind of our process. So I want to kind of stop there, see if anybody has questions on this part of the process as it pertains to us at this point. Are there any questions? Okay, and we'll go on down to the next one. So once we have our packet that we've met at that, that monthly meeting and it's scored, then we send that packet up to the county administrator. That's bullet four. That's already the current process. That's what's been going on. Then those, the highly scored proposals, they are put together by the administrative office for a packet for the county board approval. And then that goes to the, the board. They are the ones that do, do the actual final vote to approve or not to approve to advance um, for funding. And if they approve it, then the county works with that particular organization. Um, they go through the whole process that, that you have to do to get funding from the county and that's already in place. And there's tools out there and um, the, so we are just um, utilizing that process that's already there. Now, if there is a mid score, um, that proposal can get sent back down to the advisory body. If the, if the Board of Commissioners decides that they're not going to fund it, they can send that proposal back down to us and then we collectively can decide if it has merit, maybe we want to invite the organization that submitted it to present to us, explain a little bit more, maybe do a little more mentoring, help them, you know, work their proposal and then allow them to resubmit it. We are, we are including that in our scope as that we have the ability to be able to do that. So during, I'm looking at during that monthly meeting that we would score proposals and we could also invite um, other, you know, ones that had the mid range, if we want them to come and pre um, present to us, we would be doing it at that meeting at the advisory body meeting, not at the regular Commission on Aging meeting. Anything to do with this ARPA would be held at the advisory um, meeting. And then the other meeting, the Commission on Aging meeting would be strictly Commission on Aging business. So is that kind of kind of clear on how, how we're, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to separate this to keep, you know, on, on point and on tasks that we do. The impact on human resources, it's just basically telling the, the Board of Commissioners that we plan on using the process and the people that are already in place. And then in addition, we are asking for um, another dedicated staff time, um, new or temporary, to help us during this process to do our administrative communication and scheduling. Um, we know that we have Stephanie, but Stephanie is the Commission on Aging. Uh, we'll let the Board of Commissioners figure out how that um, they can provide us with additional um, um, staffing support during this uh, process. And then that concludes up with our citations. So we have all the citations that we have quoted. And then I also listed other additional reports and um, uh, websites that we have visited 
to help us pull this together. So if you just even just read the titles of the, um, the citations and the proposals that we have, we have really focused on COVID-19, impact on seniors, hunger, housing, workforce challenges. We really try to round it out as, as much as we could so that the County Board of Commissioners can see that COVID really, um, really had a bad impact and, and this recovery money will help our, our county heal. With that being said, I will be quiet and let it be open for any discussion, any thoughts. I see Margaret uh, raising her hand and then Elizabeth and then Peter. Um, gosh, this is really great work. When I first read it, I thought, boy, that's a lot of work. And um, I think it will be. Um, and I think we need to make a commitment uh, to this. Um, the one thing I question I have, um, Bonnie, is, mm -hmm. um, is there a format that's been developed for submission of proposals? Because I yes. think that might streamline things. Yes, it is, and it's web-based. So you can actually go out, if you wanna go out and look at the uh, community priority fund right now, there is a web application form that you can go out and look at. And they also are holding technical um, assistant workshops and you can sign up and participate in that as well. So that will kind of familiarize yourself with the current process that we're, we're looking to model this after. How do we get it, Bonnie? Um, if you go out to the regular, um, just the county commission website, mm -hmm. um, the priority fund, it's got its own, own little section and link. Um, okay, thank maybe, you. Maybe Peter can maybe Peter can shoot that out to everybody if I, if, I, if he has time. He's got his hand up, so we'll ask him when he. When it's okay. His turn. Thank you. Thank when you. I think we're going to jump Peter in the line just because he may have a quick answer. Okay. Peter? Uh, yes. So real quick thing, uh, washna.org forward slash rescue dash plan. Um, that's kind of the landing page for all things related to the American Rescue Plan that the county is doing. Um, one of the sub pages of that is called investing in our community's health and well-being. And that's where you'll find all of the information about the community priority fund. Um, and all of that stuff that you talked about, recordings of the technical assistance sessions, details about how they're structuring their ask will be included. Um, yeah, so I, so washington.org forward slash rescue plan has a ton of information about all of the ARPA stuff. Community priority fund can be found in those sub pages there. Um, and then the, the one thing I just wanted to flag for y'all, just so you are aware, um, uh, regardless of what this final proposal ends up looking like, uh, there are a couple of things that I think just need to be spelled out. Um, when we're talking about staff vetting for eligibility, um, most of those eligibility has to do with um, ARPA requirements at the federal level. So it might be helpful to work some of those in, um, specifically looking at uh, uh, even though it, it, serve, it can serve people throughout the county, ARPA does require for the most part that these are going to uh, uh, lower income or other adversely affected uh, areas. Um, so including things like some of the income requirements that uh, ARPA already uh, states is required for their stuff, which is 65% of the area median income, uh, which as you heard Yvonne talking about earlier, a lot of older adults fall into just because of the income that is available to them. Um, so uh, while I don't think that significantly changes it, I think including some of those details around a specific eligibility that the federal government states will strengthen the ask just because it'll show that y'all have been kind of intentional in making sure that not just is it a good program here, it's already like ARPA eligible as well, just by including some of those metrics around uh, people being served are either below 65% the area median income or live in a qualified census tract, uh, as that, those are kind of the two general rules for all ARPA funding. So just wanted to flag that as, as a suggestion. Are those, are those, is that specific language out there on that, um, the .org site, the Washington.org site, Peter? 
I, I said I talked to Jason and and he didn't mention that. So I don't I I don't I don't have at my disposal the ARPA, you know what I'm saying, the qualified language. To, yeah, to I can I can send that specific language that we've been using. Um, and it comes from the Treasury's guidance. And it's that uh, Treasury presumes that the following households are impacted, low to moderate income households below 300% uh, the federal property line or 65% the area median income. So I can write that up and send it to you. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, I have Elizabeth uh, and then Stephen and Q behind her. Um, I have a couple of points. Uh, for the question about eligibility, and Peter, I don't know if there is an eligibility requirement for the entities to be nonprofits or not. Um, so uh, any, no individual can get like money through this type of stream. So as long as it is a legal entity. So businesses are eligible, nonprofits are eligible. Um, at least in the community priority fund that this okay. is based off of. Uh, and there are like processes in place that if like an organization has a great idea, but maybe doesn't have all of the legal requirements as an organization, we'll work with them to check those off. So a good idea doesn't get wasted because of our contracting process. So I don't know if, if maybe stealing a couple more sentences from that existing thing might help uh, strengthen the proposal. Um, the Another thing is I agree with Ma what Margaret said about the commitment, um, but I think it, it is, if we commit to this, it is a wonderful um, next step for the commission because what we'll get out of it is concrete ideas that um, the county support residents in the county think will help. Um, and I think it will help us educate ourselves even more through the review process. Um, I do have a suggestion in adding the additional reports. Um, we talked a lot about social isolation and its impact on, <clears throat> on health and well-being because it's based on the state of Michigan, you might want to add as a reference the State Advisory Council's report from last year on social isolation, just as a reference, because it is the Michigan-based data. And it also has some ideas of programs that um, might address some some of the cons impact of COVID. So that just might be something to throw in as an additional report. And I'm assuming, Bonnie, that if we have a couple of minor little things we see, uh, if we happen to see a typo or something, we should just shoot that to you. Yes, please. Can and Elizabeth, can you send me the citation? I will send you the citation. Send me the citation and your uh, your notes, okay? Okay. Okay, I have a cue of Stephen first and then I have Bonnie in line after him. Yeah, um, I guess for me, I was wondering whether um, with the additions mentioned by the Commission on Aging members um, to the proposal, whether we can have a vote of support, you know, with the additions, being added on as opposed to waiting to the next meeting for that formal appro um, approval by the members or denial by the members of the Commission on Aging. I think once everyone has had a chance to make their comments, then we will entertain a motion if you should wish to do so. All right, thank you. Bonnie? Yeah, um, the nonprofit triggered a, a very good, with the conversation with Peter, and I wanna ask everyone in there, um, I, I had this question asked of me, is this proposal only going to be used for nonprofits? And as Peter mentioned, it also can be used, can, individuals can't get funding, but it can be used for businesses and organizations. So that's probably gonna be in that language that Peter is going to be sending me. 
are we, I would like a discussion with everyone on do we just want nonprofits or do we want businesses and nonprofits included in here? Because that, because this is, you know, we're, we're you know, pulling the, the final um, proposal and we do want it to be clear and we want, you know, we, so I'm just kind of opening it up. What is, what are your, what are your thoughts? Do we have it open to businesses in Washtenaw County and nonprofits and organizations similar to what they have on the um, community priority fund? Or do we restrict it only to nonprofit organizations? Thoughts? Raise your hand if you have a comment, Elizabeth. Um, Peter, um, I was wondering what the thinking was with the other, uh, the Community Priority Fund, what the thinking was to include other than nonprofits. If yeah, you happen so, to know. So a couple of things. One is just trying to be, uh, paint a broad brush and make sure we're not, uh, not, again, taking away a good idea because of how an organization is structured, um, whether it's a business or a nonprofit. And then also one of the goals of the Community Priority Fund is addressing uh, early childhood education. And we know that a lot of childcare providers are businesses. So like that was an example of like, hey, these, these groups are still serving the community even if they are a for-profit business. So we wanna make sure we're keeping a broad brush. Uh, that's not to say that, uh, uh, when something comes before you, you can't decide based on the organization, like, is this a good proposal? Is this not a good proposal? Um, but it's more just like allowing a broad brush so that as many applications and ideas can be submitted up front as possible. And you're not uh, filtering unnecessarily too early on in the process. I don't know if that applies here. That would be up to y'all. Uh, but that was kind of the rationale for the Community Priority Fund. Based on that comment, I would think that it is possible I could see a home health care agency um, might have a great idea. So I, I can see how that might work in the aging sector as well, but I wonder what other people think. And Peter, I would be interested to know if um, local governments like townships um, would be eligible under the community priority fund so we can determine whether we want to include that in ours. I don't think that question has come up, so I don't have a specific answer. I, I would, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, I do know that uh, local jurisdictions already receive their own ARPA funding, so I'm sure that might impact whether they get some of the county's ARPA funding since they already have their own to use. Um, but again, I don't have that answer because I don't think it's been asked. So good question, I can check. Okay, thank you. I see Stevens in queue. Uh, yes, hi. So uh, one thing that I guess, first of all, I wanna say I support having for-profits in there as a person who's worked in for-profit and not-for-profit organizations. Um, I'm not yet convinced that, um, that when it comes to actually serving older adults, that not-for-profits are not uh, necessarily helping, um, you know, more older adults um, because they're not-for-profit. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, I kind of support the idea of keeping the, um, you know, the, the net open. Um, so anyway, that's it. Okay, uh, anybody else? I'm thinking that, um, there's a couple, I, I guess I'd be interested to know what the preference of the group is. Do you want to approve this proposal now with the, you know, trusting that the things that we've discussed will be added and um, enhanced to it, or should we wait and approve it at our next meeting? I guess I'd be interested in your opinion. Stephen and then Margaret. And then yeah, I, I, I mean, I think you know where I stand, but the ra I wanted to mention the rationale for um, sort of having a vote now 
would be that if we were to try to get it to people um, like the commissioners before the meeting, but others too that might want to come to the meeting, um, it, I think that that would be something getting it out and approving it sooner rather than later, making, you know, Bonnie making the changes that were recommended and then being able to send it back to the Commission on Aging for you to be able to get it to whoever you want to get to. Um, I, I think there's a lot of value in the timing of it. So that's why I support the yeah. vote now. Okay, Margaret and then Bonnie. Well, one of the things we don't know is about uh, local governments, um, whether or not they qualify, maybe by leaving it unsaid, um, then um, we can use it. I, I guess I, I think we ought to be as broad as we can be. And um, so I, I guess I would just leave it as is and perhaps vote today. I don't if we're ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bonnie. Oh, I'm just overwhelmed at you guys' confidence. I, I thank you guys. Um, I, I really, um, I'm, I'm kind of torn. I mean, I would really like to have the full commission, all of your support and vote on it after we have the final document ready and say, this is, this is what it is, because I think it is so important. And I think the language that Peter is going to send down um, they changed the, you know, I, I just want everyone to be super comfortable with what we get. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm all for as soon as I get the language from Peter, I get some the input from Elizabeth to get everything together um, to send, send it out so we all have time to look at it. So on the 15th, we can, um, the, on the on the fifteenth, we can look at it and then do the final vote on the final proposal. As far as the timing goes, Mar Marta is going to be presenting to the working commission very soon. Aunt. what what's the date are you pre presenting, Marta? The twentieth. All right, so Marta is going to be presenting five days later. So we're going to vote on a Friday. She's going to what's that a Wednesday? She'll be presenting on a Wednesday. At that time, then all of the commissioners would have received it. So if we approve it on Friday, we can we can send out to our our commissioners that, that Friday or Monday our personal letter to them asking for their support that Marta is going to be presenting. After that, then we can you know, do our reach out to the communities and say, this is being presented on Wednesday. Please send in your vote of you know, support to the commissioners. Um, I'm sure they're not gonna make a decision there at the presentation. They're gonna hear the presentations and then meet and discuss it later. Um, so I'll leave it up to you. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm very, um, I'm, I'm very touched at, at your confidence in us to be able to pull this together um, as a final proposal without seeing it. So I, I am comfortable doing it either way, whichever way you guys decide. Okay, I have Elizabeth, then Stephen, then Marie. Um, I'm curious. It's really a timing issue, as, as Stephen pointed out, um, to get it out there and get support. What I don't know is the timing of the commissioner's decision-making process, and maybe Peter could fill us in on that because that might help us make up our minds what to do. Peter? Uh, sure, so I can, I can speak generally um, without any specific timelines, but I do know that end of April, early May is when, uh, when the next ARPA package, um, whatever that ends up looking like, uh, that, that proposal is, is being designed by the administrative office to bring to the commissioners for, for reactions and uh, and thoughts and edits. So um, after that, uh, I think we would follow the best practice of our second ARPA package, where once it was brought forward, that proposal from the administrator, um, it's, it's alive for at least a month or two. 
um, so that people in the public can give feedback on it. And then the commissioners would come back and approve it with any modifications from community engagement. So um, I'd say the timeline is if y'all make this recommendation, whenever you make it, the question is how much of that uh, will be included in, if at all, because I don't want to say that it's a sure thing, uh, how much of that will be included in the administrator's recommendation to the board? Um, and then the board has time to make edits and get community engagement. So it, it's, it's, it's a fluid timeline, um, but I would be surprised if it, it was less than a month before any specific decisions were made. It, we're probably looking at a public proposal with several different things in it, potentially including this ask, um, coming live in the next month or two. And then a month or two after that is when the vote would probably be happening. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just have a question. It sounds like it's a pretty tight time frame, though, between to get this into the county administrative proposal that goes forth to the commissioners. That might be a, a key timing point. True. Right? I will say the county administrative team that is preparing this proposal, um, which I have worked closely with in the past, is fully aware of this, this ask. So regardless of when it's final, uh, they're aware that this is coming. Okay, Stephen is in line next and then Marie. Yes, um, I, you know, I think Peter's addition was, was helpful for me to, um, to reduce the urgency. Um, on the other hand, I was, I guess my question would be just um, as a rule for the Commission on Aging, if let's say, Bonnie added the additions, and then we submitted it between meetings to the Commission on Aging. Is there a way of allowing for a vote prior to that the vote doesn't have to be at an actual meeting, that it can be done through email and then announced at the subsequent meeting? I think that would probably be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. I don't think we can have, um, you know. Uh, votes on anything unless we follow the provisions of the Open Meetings Act. So I would be reluctant to suggest any such solution. So, but just, can I confirm that? Is Peter, is that your understanding as well? Absolutely, that would be not permissible and not binding. Okay, thank you. Okay, Marie. Yeah, I um, had a lot of the same questions as Elizabeth did. Um, so I'll just say that I feel comfortable voting on this today if that's what we decide to do. Okay, I guess maybe I should ask if there's anyone who feels uncomfortable voting on this today, because I wouldn't want to leave anyone out there hanging. And I also wanna make sure, is there anyone who is uncomfortable with the time commitment that's being asked by this proposal? Um, because this is gonna be, for a couple of months here, this is gonna be really intense amounts of work on our part out, outside the boundaries of these meetings because there will be a lot of time spent in reviewing and reading proposals and scoring. So I see Margaret's hand and then I see Stephen's hand. Um. <clears throat> You know, I, I appreciate Bonnie's comments about, um, I, as I heard you, Bonnie, it was to maybe vote on it next time and feel sure about some of the changes yet to come. Um, is that correct, Bonnie? Yeah, I just want everyone, I don't want anybody to feel, you know, that they're not getting an opportunity to read the final report and digest everything. I want everybody to be comfortable with it because you know, you're know, you all a, a, a very vital part of this whole proposal and process of getting these fundings out to the senior communities um, if we are um, awarded ARPA funds. So you know, like I said, it, it is a commitment to be reading the proposals um, granted, you can always vote just to go with the score that the subcommittee has done, but we would want you to, you know, you'll be getting a packet and reading them and, and being prepared before we come into the meeting. So it is a little bit of homework before each one of those meetings, a little more than what we've had before. Oh, I, <clears throat> with a couple of things left 
undetermined, like um, who can apply for these funds, um, and making sure that everyone has read it thoroughly and thought carefully about the commitment. And um, Bonnie's uh, <coughs> mentioning, I want y'all to feel comfortable with it. I, I would suggest we vote at the next meeting. I, I think that's probably the better way to go. Um, and I, you know, timing is what it is. And so I guess I prefer um, seeing the final proposal. I think it's also worth mentioning that there's no reason why we can't say to our contacts that a proposal is coming from the Co Commission on Aging about ARPA funding. Right. And it will be available after the 15th of April. Um, yeah. So that, you know, that it, it's not like we're keeping this any sort of big secret here. You're correct. Yeah. Okay. So I have Stephen in line and then I have Bonnie and then I have um, Elizabeth. Yeah, um, you know, I just want to say that I do still want to, uh, and by the way, I heard Marty to, you know, that, uh, but I still would like to um, make a motion. So just, just you know, um, that I, I do mention that. Um, and there was one other thing and I'm blocking, so I'll have to raise my hand again if I think of it. Okay, I'll come back to you and you, you can have your motion ready if you want to do that. Bonnie? Um, the, the structure of the proposal that I have with this advisory board, this 11 member advisory board, um, being a vital part of distributing funds for seniors in our community was because we're the Commission on Aging. I just felt that it made a tremendous amount of sense. Um, we're all appointed by our board of commissioners. We all have vested time in our community to um, enhancing the life of seniors um, or older adults. I have to stop seeing seniors, older adults in our community. I mean, if, if there is serious concerns that you think that it is too much for you to do, we could flip back to the community priority model, which is that instead of having us be the advisory body we let our commissioners pick 11 other people to do it. Um, but I, I really want to do this. Um, I really want to be part of awarding some of this ARPA money to our older, uh, to support our older um, adults in our community and our community service providers. Um, I see where the nonprofits and the profit can come into play, um, like aging in place, for housing, one of the things was, how do you get your house repaired? How do you get your things fixed? Who knows? There might be some smaller companies out there that do that. Who knows? We, we don't know. That's why I like the broad brush out there to, to see what's out there in our community and how we can help fund um, um, some of these organizations and, and companies. So I'm willing to do whatever you guys want to vote on. If you, if, if you think about this and you think it's too much, we can still have time to pivot. According to Peter, we still have time. And um, I, I think that the heart of the proposal is good, whichever way we want to go. Bonnie, I think you've left a nice escape ramp for anyone who's not on the ARPA committee subcommittee, because I, I believe that the ARPA subcommittee has committed to doing this work since they're putting this proposal forward and anyone else who is not on the ARPA subcommittee, who is concerned about the time commitment could always, as you suggest, default to just accepting whatever the ARPA subcommittee says. So I think we have an escape ramp there uh, if needed. And we also have um, two open positions on, the, on right. the ARPA subcommittee as well, because right now it's myself, um, Stephen and Bennett. So, Yes, we would welcome two more members to join if you want to and, and do the initial scoring and preparing up for the advisory body. But you do have that ability. You can just vote to approve what the subcommittee has done. Okay, so I have Elizabeth's hand up and I have Margaret's hand up and then I'm gonna go to Stephen. Okay, um, yeah, I think to respond to your comments, Bonnie, I haven't heard anybody 
saying that they're not willing to make the commitment to um, be the uh, body that reviews these proposals. And I absolutely agree. It, it's really part of the core of why we exist. Um, also, the questions people have had is about including wording to make sure that it reflects the federal requirements. So it's kind of all in one piece. People don't have to look back and go, what are those federal requirements? That there's some sentences in there. I heard some things about making sure that we make it clear that the eligibility is as broad as possible. Those are things that really don't affect the concept. They're the wording of the proposal. Because uh, again, I haven't heard anybody say about eligibility that no, it absolutely should be small. Everybody's made comments about let's make it as broad as possible to see what comes in. So I'm, but I certainly understand what Bonnie says, you know, about we're going to be out there um, saying the commission made this proposal, would you please support it? And so you want everybody to feel totally comfortable with the wording of the proposal. So I'm wondering if we could do two things. Um, one, a vote now that we support the structure of the proposal or the draft, say we support the draft proposal. And that means that we can go out and start talking to people and saying, this is our, the concept. And then at the next meeting, we can vote on the actual final wording of the proposal. I don't know if that's something that would be, there's something we can even do, but it might be a way of responding to the need to start the discussion and then have everybody look at the final thing. And maybe Peter can give us some we're keeping you busy, Peter. <laughs> so, uh, some uh, wording on whether it would be appropriate for the commission to support the idea and concept and then take another vote. <laughs> <role later. laughs> well, I'll give Peter a chance to start. Margaret, did you have something before we go to Peter? I, I, I wanted to ask who, who of our um, committee or commission is not here? Uh, we are missing uh, Pearl DeLos Wilson and I and Jason uh, Masajewski. And Jason, okay. Um, he's already given his. I he we've already gone through the proposal with him, and he has seen the draft, and he gave us our his support on that. So I'm I'm happy that that Jason is is on board with us on that. Well, I I rather like the idea of supporting it in concept. Um, um, but to me, there are some unanswered questions and I'm, I'm very much in favor of the proposal and I don't want to vote against it. So I, I'd prefer that we have some alternative, um, to it, to, Peter, to can you today. address, would you address whether we would be allowed to accept this in, in concept now, and then the final at, on the 15th of April at our next meeting? It's certainly an interesting idea um I, I, I don't know if i've seen always like interesting that. peter <laughs> you, 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 you all are always interesting and I, i've told stephanie this just so she is prepared from a kind of a note taking and like uh vote taking point of view but uh what i have seen done that is similar to this and might make a little more sense is uh when you make a motion today if you want to approve it you could approve it uh, contingent upon uh, the ARPA uh, subcommittee uh, making final edits and clarifications based on uh, what was discussed today. Um, so basically you'd be approving it, understanding that there are going to be edits uh, and you're approving those like that, that subcommittee to make those necessary edits. Does that make sense? That, that would be a more traditional way of doing it. I think both are fine. I do think it might be confusing because uh, once this is final, like uh, I like, if you vote to approve this structure, I'm going to share it today with the administrative team saying that y'all approve this structure. Um, 
And then it, in two weeks, I'm like, hey, they approved this today. And there might be some confusion about like, wait, didn't they already send this to us? So uh, I'll defer to y'all on what you all want to do. That was just some of my initial thoughts uh, upon hearing the discussion. Well, if we approve it today, contingent upon their requested revisions, that means you would not be sharing it with the administrative team today because we would need to make those right revisions. Is that correct? Right. I would share the final version of the report whenever it's ready. Um, mm -hmm. So it would be sharing it next week when the ARPA subcommittee is able to incorporate some of this language rather than waiting another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and would just defer to y'all about what is, what is favorable upon that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like we have some options and I've been seeing Stephen looking like he's writing stuff down. So I assume you've been drafting a motion. Um, um, I have, I just wanted to comment. One is, um, you know, and, and Bonnie, you could tell me if you felt this was true, but in our subcommittee, we did think that, um, or at least we were suggesting, but didn't put it in writing, that one is if you, when we get to a vote of the commission on aging, that if you haven't read the proposal that, um, that, I mean, yes, of course you can go with the subcommittee's decision, but it might even make more sense to abstain and, um, and saying, you know, I haven't read it and that's okay. We don't, not, you know, we're not, we can't do stuff 24 seven. And so that's, that's a very accessible um, route. So I, I just wanted to uh, comment on that. And then the other thing, again, we're not putting in writing is an expectation that the Commission on Aging, if there was a conflict of interest in any proposal, that that would be another reason to abstain. Mm -hmm. So again, we didn't, we didn't leave that in there because we felt like we wanted to leverage what the other community priority fund did. But on the other hand, you know, I'm sure we're gonna share that with you as an informal suggestion. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, if you have a motion. Um, yeah. So Good. I have a motion to um, to do what what um, <laughs> Peter do what said. Peter said. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't so. think that's going to work. I think we're going to have to have some actual wording. Uh, yeah, no, no Stephanie, Peter, feel free you to make the motion whatever Peter says. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I said if you want to make a motion that I can just say whatever and that's that's the rule. Please, go ahead. Please. But you know, get that exact wording right uh, for the for the record. Reflected in yeah. the note. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, Peter. So for the record, can you state what it is that both you and I intended? So it sounds to me that there is a motion from Steve Stein to uh, approve the uh, the ARPA subcommittee's recommendation. Um, for a formal ARPA investment to address Older Adults Recovery Fund contingent upon the subcommittee making edits based on today's meeting conversation. Is that what I'm hearing? That is absolutely it. I, it's funny, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the motion for Steve, from Steve. So we would need a second on that motion and then discussion. Everybody wants to be a comedian. Okay, mm -hmm. who has, a, do we have a second to this? Elizabeth? I'll second. Okay, is there any further discussion? Ellen? You have to mute, unmute yourself. I just did, I just did. Um, I'm wondering if included in the motion could be the date of when we're going to have the final vote. So in other words, we should have a date. Oh. I feel it's public, so we should have a date. The um, final vote would be at the next meeting. I would, which uh, is the 15th. So I would, would put into the um, motion that we would have, we would vote on the 15th. Okay, well, that's not the motion. You're, you're contradicting the motion. The motion is to approve it today and that the edit would be made further and that there would be no, by implication, oh, I didn't understand no further that. vote on April 15th. So what you're asking for is- I'm sorry, no, I, I didn't understand it. I, I really thought maybe it was back when we were voting twice or I, in my mind, I got voting twice. I missed it, I'm sorry. No, it's no need to apologize, it's a clarification. But um, I think it is reasonable to ask, and it doesn't need to be in the motion, but when 
at what point will we know that we can share this as a final report? And I think the answer is, or a final proposal, I think the answer to that question is, should it be approved today? Then the ARPA subcommittee will make the edits and remove the, the uh, over uh, writing on the material that says draft and republish it to all of us so that we will have it. And when you have a document in hand that no longer says draft across in, you know, like gray letters, then you will have the final and you, it will be ready to be sent out at that time. But I do think you have a reasonable question, which is how soon can we expect that to happen? And I saw Bonnie's immediate reaction of, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's outside the bounds of this min, um, motion. But after the motion has been voted on, then we will ask Bonnie to let us know when she thinks she can have the final ready. Does that seem like a reasonable way to pr proceed into that? Does that answer your question, Ellen? Um, yes, it does answer my question. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know why that was in my head, but I wanted to make sure that we had a date of when this was done, so. Yeah. And I think it's wise to ask. It's always better to have clarity than not. Well, thank you, but I apologize for the time. Thanks. Anybody, anybody else with any discussion before we have, uh, Stephen, did you have another discussion? Yeah, yeah the, only, the only thing I'd mention is, so um, we have meetings um, every Monday. So we have another meeting this Monday. So I just wanted to share with Bonnie um, that I know we, part of this is gonna be dependent on Peter. Uh, helping us with the language that he mentioned. So uh, I just wanted to give you my commitment that anything I can do to support a timely um, resubmission so that the COA gets to see it, I, I would hope we could do that next week. And uh, I, I don't want to overspeak, but um, I just wanted to share my commitment to finding the time to help. Um, I think we will be a little bit dependent on Peter. I don't okay. know, Peter, if you could speak to that. Uh, if possible, could you invite me to that meeting on Monday? And then we can just, I can get you that language in real time. Uh, just that would be great. So, I, so you're not great. waiting on me. It's sometimes easier to just grab a chunk of my time so I can just send it like in real time. That would be great. We will do that. Okay. Ellen, are you still having your hand up or are you all set? You're all set. Okay. All right. We're going to have Stephanie call the roll then. Or call them the uh, vote. Got it. Okay. Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Ellen Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. And Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is potential millage. Uh, I so thought you wanted, hang on, Marta, did you want me to do a summary real quick on when I can? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, about yes. Please, please say when you think you can have this. Okay, so my takeaway so far is Elizabeth, you're going to send me your edits and, and citations. Yes. Um, uh, Margaret, if you could send me your concerns, because you said you have a few concerns, if you could just shoot me an email to make sure that we're incorporating those in there, please. Okay. Peter, I'm going to invite you to the ARPA meeting. To, um, I'll send you the link to that on Monday. Okay. And then officers, once I get everything massaged, put together, and um, Elizabeth, if you'd like to be included, I'd like to send the final um, word draft of the final uh, document. You can look one more set of eyes for typos or language or whatever. And once I get that okay. feedback, then then that would be the final document. It's kind of kind of the process. Okay, so it's if we all hang on, you know, and and I will commit this next week soon as I get the information to keep working on this, okay? And try to get it turned around as soon as possible. Okay, I see that Bennett has a question. I think it's uh, the timing of the Monday meeting ought to be stated, uh, I believe, Bonnie. I don't know what it is. Is it, is it a morning meeting? Five o'clock, I believe. Is, is it an evening one? Five in the evening? So Peter, um, if you're 
off the clock at five. If you do want to send me the language, we can talk about it in our meeting. If you could okay. still send me the invite and I will either, I will, that, that gives me an either or, either send it before or attend that meeting. So it gives that me the motivation to get it to you before five. We'll do it. Thank you for the time, Bennett. Yeah, because we have some in the morning and then the next week we have them in the afternoon. We alternate, so. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we have um, exactly 10 minutes left in our meeting time, but I think we can, we can do this. So um, we're gonna get through the rest of the agenda, I'm pretty sure. So the next item on the agenda is the potential millage subcommittee report. And that would be Elizabeth, who's the chair of that subcommittee. We have our next meeting scheduled uh, next Wednesday afternoon. And Steve is joining us as an additional member of the meet of the subcommittee, which is Marta, Ellen, Steve, and me. And uh, that's what's happening with us. Okay, thank you. Um, now we have a discussion item review of bylaws. And I know we have suggested text and I've been scrambling around here looking for it and I cannot find it. So who has the suggested text for the review of the bylaws? You did. Pull that up, just give me a moment. So one thing- You I know, by the way, when, if I can, um, one thing to add to Elizabeth, um, you know, report on the millage. I, I did sort of make a recommendation about um, sort of taking heed of Marie's suggestion about having community members as part of it. So um, because it's gonna be my first meeting, we're gonna discuss it. I wanna say that's gonna happen, but I did wanna mention that it, it feels like the other committees are getting benefit out of having non-COA members and so, um, just for the group's sake, you should know that I'll, I'll be proposing that. Although I think factually speaking, there is four subcommittees and only one of them has a community member at this time, as far as I know. No, no I thought there was um, Sarah Hong in the Harper, and then didn't I hear Chris Lemon on another committee? Yeah. I did not hear Sarah Hong listed as a member of a committee. Yeah. Which one is she on? Yeah, she's, she's on the ARPA. Until the proposal, until the proposal is actually submitted, so this this next meeting probably will be her last as a as a member. Because once the once the final proposal is done, then we have the conflict of interest, and she's already addressed that. So, okay, thank you. Okay, who, who had the text for the potential bylaw revision? I do have the text. Do you want me to share my screen, or do you want me to read it? Would you share your screen so everyone can see it? Sure. You should have the ability, do you see it? Yeah, I'm just deciding how I want to share my screen. <laughs> so this is the uh, text of the, hold still. Sorry, I just wanna make it visible for every, or like readable. All right, how's that? That's good, thank you. So um, this is a, a specific proposal uh, for section 5.6 on the open meetings section of the bylaws. Um, and it includes that it adds a phrase saying, noting the requirement that all meetings must be available to the general public. Commission on Aging meetings will include accessible virtual meetings in person or a combination of both and will be recorded. That's the proposed text that's being brought forth by the officers. Um, so you can, is, does anyone have any questions or discussion on that? Um, because in the past, the bylaws have been mute on that point. Bonnie? Yeah, the reason um, I, I put forward the request to um, change the bylaws or, or to amend the bylaw is because it said we're subject to the Open Meeting Act. And as you know, currently that means it states you have to be in person. And we have right now, we're still being allowed to meet uh, virtually. So that's why I wanted to have the language to include it because we, are, we don't have to follow all of the rules of the Open Meeting Act right now, such as meeting in person. So that's why I have that. And I think it's important to put that in there because I think there's a great benefit for um, us being able to meet virtually versus having to always meet in person. So that was the reason for the change. 
And the process for this is that once we uh, propose a, a revision to our bylaws, then it has to go to the Board of Commissioners for their uh, acceptance or rejection. So uh, we are not the final word on this. Um, Ellen, you had something? I was going to make a motion that we approve it. Thank you. Is there a support to that motion? Okay. I see Margaret. Any other discussion? Okay, Stephanie, will you call the roll? Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Helen Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. And Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, okay, the next item on the agenda is report from the chair. Um, Stephen, did you have something else? Um, yeah, I did just for a future meeting, so I don't want discussion, but in regards to bylaws, if I remember one of the bylaws was that there's a certain amount of meetings you're unable to miss. Um, and I just was thinking, first of all, I am, if I think I heard right, that Pearl, um, because of health reasons, hasn't been able um, to make the meetings. But it, if that is one of the bylaws, I guess that for me, you know, as you know, the diversity issue is a big one and would think that the group would benefit from that voice. And that if that isn't, if that is a bylaw about missing meetings, I just wonder whether or not this is an opportunity to make sure that we do have the voice um, of our community. So we don't need to talk about it today because it's late, but I was hoping that we could bring that up next meeting. Uh, Stephen, I think that's addressed in the bylaws as unexcused absences. And I believe that Ms. Wilson has been notifying the county that she's been unable to attend meetings for health reasons uh, as she's required to do to get an excused absence. So um, perhaps we can talk about that off uh, the meeting a little bit further, but I, sure. I would be reluctant to talk about an individual person like that in a meeting. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, okay. So report from the chair. Um, in uh, present planning for my presentation to the Board of Commissioners, I'm collecting personal impact stories. Uh, I know Bennett's been very uh, passionate about talking about personal impact stories for the residents of Lurie Terrace. And those are some of the things that I would like to um, include to the extent that I can fit them into this ever expanding 15 minute um, stuff everything into this tiny little box uh, presentation that I'm gonna try to make. So if anyone has any personal impact stories about that might be relevant to um, the needs assessment or the ARPA proposal, uh, I would be happy to hear that. You can send them to me privately. Um, the next- um, Margaret, on that question, um, would you want the audience of non-COA members to forward theirs as well to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, that's what I meant by anyone. <laughs> anyone and everyone. Thank you. Um, not guaranteeing that everyone will be included. I will do my best. At the next meeting, which is on April 15th, we're gonna start on strategic planning and. Um, that's the officers are going to propose a method by which we'll do that um, in preparation for that. Um, let's see, what else do I have on my list for a report from the chair? I think that's pretty much everything. Um, Bennett? Well, I thought we were going to talk about uh, potential or prospective speakers. And well, if you, look, if you look on the list under potential future topics on the agenda, um, Spani has been scouring past minutes to find everything that we said we would talk about in the future and trying to get them in there by date that they were proposed. So if you notice that they're in date order at this point. So in July of 21, we said we would do a short and long-term strategic planning and we have not gotten to that yet. Then you will see that in December of 21, um, Ellen suggested we hear from the Transportation Coordinating Council then um, on February 18th, you'll see that uh, Stephen suggested we talk about nursing homes. Then on March 18th, uh, Elizabeth said the uh, Help the Aging Collaborative update. And then on March 18th, Elizabeth uh, suggested talking about innovative solutions. And then on March 18th, you suggested the Center for Independent Living. 
So we have a long list of potential future topics. What the officers are doing is trying to address them in date order. Otherwise, what happens to things that are put off for a long time is they end up withering and dying and we never get to them. So that's the strategy we're using right now. Um, and that is why we have potential future topics listed on the agenda the way we okay. do it, so people are informed about what's going to happen. Okay, thank you. Um, Stephen, Bonnie, and we have, we are out of time, so we need to speed it up here. Stephen? You're muted. I never took it down. Okay, Bonnie? The only thing I that I missed on this little bullet thing that's not here, it's, it's not a topic, but there was, someone was going to be putting together a letter or an email for um, Gary, thanking him for the for being the chair. I, did, I haven't seen that come forward. Are we still doing that? I pulled, that was in one of the minutes. You know, I will, I will do that if, as a graph, if you would like me to do that. Yeah, would you do that and then forward it to the officers and we'll uh, get that together. All right, thank you. Okay, I think that's it for report from the chair. We don't have any new business. Uh, we've already talked about potential future topics. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 15th at 8.30 a.m., at which point we will start on strategic planning and uh, we will also include subcommittee updates. I'm sure there will be some. Any other thoughts for the day? Bonnie, you still have your hand up or are you? Oh, nope. Taking it down, okay. Taking it down. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Margaret, moved to support. Marie, it's been moved and supported that we adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye or thumbs up, whichever you aye. 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 Okay, see everybody in a month, in a, two weeks. A month. <laughs> okay. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.